You're watching WPTA TV 21 Live News at 5 with Keith Edwards, Melissa Long, and Brent Trenum. Good evening. Topping tonight's news, the investigation into hate email directed toward minority students at Manchester College has been suspended. And the reason Indiana law states harassment must be of a single person, not a group. That, according to the Wabash County Prosecutor, 21 Alive's Camille Whitworth joins us now. Camille, sending group mail is not a violation of law, right? Well, Keith and Melissa, that's absolutely right. They say they've done their investigating in North Manchester into the matter, and they say that the racially motivated email sent to 110 minority students was not addressed to a single single person, but making it illegal under Indiana law. One message originated from a computer terminal in the college library and went out to minority students. The message was filled with racial and ethnic slurs and threats. North Manchester police will not investigate further, but the college president says he will. Under the statutes of the state of Indiana and the United States of America, the way that that message was formed and transmitted is not a crime. We will now take it through our system and try to find some way that we can uh, subpoena the uh, records of the uh, hot mail. There is no evidence that sending hate mail to a group over the internet violates any state law. So Keith and Melissa at the college is trying to get back to business as usual. And of course, I'll have more on the story tonight at 6. Maybe they ought to look at the state law. That's Maybe right. That'll change. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Camille. All right. Well, it doesn't look good for the man accused of killing Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. According to his brother, 70-year-old James Earl Ray has slipped into a coma. A hospital spokeswoman has confirmed the story. Ray suffers from cirrhosis of the liver. He was taken to the hospital over the weekend. Jurors in the trial of the Army's former top enlisted man have to work this weekend, it looks like. After three days of deliberations, the jury deciding the fate of Sergeant Gene McKinney has yet to reach a decision. The jurors agreed to work tomorrow if a decision is not reached. Today, deliberations got off to a rather shaky start this morning after one of the jurors threatened to quit, but the judge instructed all four officers and four enlisted soldiers to continue working. Well, it looks as if yet another White House intern will testify before a grand jury in the Monica Lewinsky case. According to WCBS-TV, Sherry Kelly Densick of Manhattan was subpoenaed yesterday. Densick worked at the White House at the same time Monica Lewinsky did. The former intern says she does not know Lewinsky but admits to contacting her for legal advice. Lawyers for Paula Jones, meanwhile, are pushing for her sexual harassment lawsuit against the president to move forward. New documents were filed today to show why the case should continue. Last month, the president's legal team tried to get the lawsuit dismissed. Meanwhile, the group funding Jones is threatening her lawyers. They say the attorneys have an illegal personal defense fund. A tobacco company is moving forward in settlements with states. The Liggett Company has now reached settlements with 40 states. Under the deal, Liggett will give each state at least $1 million. Liggett is the smallest of the tobacco firms and was the first to admit that cigarettes are addictive and cause disease. It is possible that a cooked hamburger contains more carcinogens than eight hours of secondhand smoke. That is what a tobacco scientist told jurors today in the wrongful death suit in Muncie. But Scott Appleton then contradicted, contradicted himself under cross-examination by admitting that there's little evidence of a link between hamburger and lung cancer. Philip Wiley is suing the major tobacco companies claiming secondhand smoke at a hospital where his non-smoking wife worked caused her death from lung cancer in 1991. The case of a slain beauty queen may be headed to a grand jury. Boulder, Colorado police say their investigation into the murder of JonBenet Ramsey is at a stalemate. They're requesting the case be turned over to a grand jury. The grand jury will be used to obtain sworn testimony not available through routine investigations. Ramsey was found beaten and strangled in December of 1996. Two young Chicago brothers are being charged with murder. The 9-year-old and the 14-year-old boys allegedly beat a foster child living in their home today. Police say 5-year-old David Jones died of a tearing in the intestine and swelling of the brain. The two brothers admitted to using their hands and a belt to assault Jones, but their lawyer says the fight was nothing more than what would normally happen between brothers. The U.S. Senate is trying to put Iraq's Saddam Hussein in prison for war crimes. In a landslide 93 to nothing vote, lawmakers approved a measure that calls for an international war crimes tribunal. 
This would be aimed at indicting, prosecuting, and imprisoning Hussein. Right now, the measure has no teeth and is largely a symbolic gesture, but senators believe it will bring more attention to Hussein's record. Possessions of a past president will be hitting the auction block. A New York City auction house is announcing the major sale of more than 500 articles of John F. Kennedy memorabilia. The sale will take place next Wednesday and Thursday. Three personal diaries that JFK kept before his presidency are expected to draw the most attention. Meanwhile, another Kennedy politician is calling it quits. Boston Congressman Joseph Kennedy has announced his retirement. Joseph is the eldest son of Robert Kennedy. He served as a congressman for six terms. You could be paying more at the grocery store for produce thanks to Mother Nature. Flooding and bitterly cold temperatures are making it better for farmers down south. Here's ABC's Steve Osinsami with the latest. The flooded Flint River in South Georgia has already forced 11,000 people out their homes. It's damaged more than 400 houses and businesses. And in some places, the water is still rising. By Saturday afternoon, workers hope to finish a mile-long levee through downtown Albany before floodwaters cause any more heartache. The engineering uh, people that we have with the city has said that this will work. Uh, I'm optimistic about it. In south-central Georgia, where there's actually a place called Peach County, U.S. Agriculture Secretary Dan Glickman came to see what the weather had done to farmers. Almost all of these buds here or flowers are probably dead. And as Mr. Evans indicated, when they, they turn brown on the inside, it's, it's all over with. Experts told him at least half the state's blueberry crops are gone, and farmers are watching their peaches closely. Temperatures throughout the South could fall into the 20s overnight and could drop that low again the next couple of evenings. The blossoms in bloom now will be killed by the cold. Doesn't kill the tree, but kills the blossom. And then that, um, that blossom won't make a peach. But the immediate threat in the South continues to come in the form of floodwaters that threaten to swallow this South Georgia church and the saint that watches over it. Steve Osinzami, ABC News. Here it wasn't too bad today, a pretty good amount of sunshine. It was nice. Let's check in now with Curtis Smith at the 21 Alive Weather Center. Curtis? Tonight the clouds come back for us and there is some snow on the way for the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. I'll tell you exactly what to expect in the forecast. Oh, yes. oh, how nice. Yes. Well, March is National <laughs> Kidney Month. Marty Wright joins us to tell us why this is important to you. Plus, Mr. Food shows us how to make chili with edible bowls. I'm Victor Locke. Coming up, Consumer Reports rates the newest marriage in video and audio technology. Kroger introduces a new generation of state-of-the-art grocery stores with newer, larger departments and more services and savings than ever. And it's open now at 6002 St. Joe Center Road. Don't miss the citywide celebration and don't miss the citywide savings at all Fort Wayne Kroger stores. Right now, USDA Choice Boneless Beef Round Steak is just 99 cents a pound and Coca-Cola 24 packs are just $3.99. UFOs really do exist. We've got something. Bring it up, bring it up. UFOs. Unbelievable.